I'm Erica, the Senior SAT and ACT Curriculum Manager at Magoosh. I'm here today with six of my top tips for SAT writing. Let's jump right in. Tip number one is probably the most important, and it's don't rely on your ear. Now, a lot of students approach SAT writing by reading the answer choices, fitting them back into the sentence, and seeing which one sounds good. And that works for some questions, but it doesn't for other questions. In fact, some questions are written specifically such that some of the wrong answers sound really good, and some of the right answers don't sound so great. So instead of chancing it by listening to your ear and sounding it out, instead make sure that for each question you have a reason why an answer is wrong or why an answer is right. There are rules and strategies that can help you answer every single question on this section. So take advantage of them and only use your ear as a desperation strategy when you really don't know what's going on in the question. Tip number two actually follows from tip number one, which is to read the question stem if there is one. Now, oftentimes where folks get into trouble with questions with question stems is that they don't really read it. And again, just pick the answer choice that sounds best, but oftentimes question stems are giving specific directions for the question. It's not just which sentence do you like best, it's which sentence does the best job of introducing the paragraph and also tying in a point from paragraph three. If we don't have that context, we're gonna have a really hard time picking the answer that does what the question asks us to do. So if the question has a question stem, be sure to read it. Tip number three is to focus on the differences between the answer choices. Now, this is particularly valuable when there isn't a question stem and you don't necessarily know what the question is testing. If you look at the answer choices, you'll be able to see what changes between them. Those changes are what makes the answer choice either right or wrong. So focusing on those differences is gonna help us identify, oh, this is dealing with verb tense, or oh, this is dealing with pronoun agreement, or, oh, this is dealing with parallelism, and so on and so forth. So by focusing on these differences, again, we don't have to rely on our ear. We can rely on specific rules to guide us. Tip number four is to look beyond the underline. So oftentimes we've looked at our answer choices and gone, okay, I see what this is testing, but I don't know <laughs> which one to pick. I don't know why this is relevant. Now, if you can't tell by reading just the answer choices, look beyond the answer choices, beyond that underlined portion to the rest of the sentence. Oftentimes the clue that gives away which answer choice we want is somewhere else in the same sentence or for more complicated questions, potentially in sentences beyond. So if you can't figure it out from the underlined portion, expand your scope. Tip number five is to know when to predict. Now, if you've watched some of the other videos on our channel, you may have seen the SAT ACT reading tip video where I talk about prediction as an incredibly powerful strategy for the reading section, but it's also a valuable strategy on the SAT writing section on specific questions. Now, if you have a grammar oriented question, predicting probably isn't gonna help you very much. But if you have a question that's more like the reading section, that has to do with the goal of a sentence, that has to do with transitioning between ideas, that has to do with whether or not a sentence should be included or deleted, the order of sentences, the tone of a specific word or phrase, in those questions, because they're so much like reading questions, it's really valuable to make a prediction before diving too deep into the answer choices. That way you know what you're looking for in those answer choices. Now, a really good tip here is if you have that question stem, which you have hopefully read, in almost all cases, that's gonna be a question that is one of those more reading-oriented questions. So if you have one of those, make sure to predict. And if you see a question where maybe it doesn't have a question stem, but you see things like transition words or tone in the answer choices, a prediction might do you some good. And our final tip, tip number six, is to know when to move on. Now, within the SAT writing section, there are a bunch of different question types, and those different question types take different amounts of time. For instance, those more reading-oriented questions, things that have a question stem, are more likely to take more time than more grammar-oriented questions without a question stem. 
Similarly, questions on which you're going to have to use your ear because you're not really sure what's going on are probably going to take more time than questions where you can rely on a specific rule or strategy. <clears throat> So know that this section is very fast paced. You have a little bit less than nine minutes per passage with about 48 seconds per question. That's pretty fast. So if you know that you're behind time or that you're taking too much time on an individual question, consider skipping it and coming back. Each of these questions is worth the same number of points, no matter how difficult or complicated it is. So spend your time on the questions that'll do you the most good and come back later for the questions that are more challenging. And those are six top tips for the SAT writing section. Let me know in the comments if you'd like more top tips videos for other sections or more top tips for SAT writing. To stay updated with all of our upcoming videos, like this video and hit the subscribe button. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and talk to you soon.